and welcome back to KD's Business Tips. Glad to be with you. Michael Lapid here talking to you about corporations and in this video we're going to talk about some basics of the share structure of your corporation. The share structure of a corporation is first of all listed in the Articles of Incorporation and the Articles, in the cor uh, articles of Incorporation will list out the different types of class of shares that are available from the Treasury to issue to shareholders and new shareholders and so forth. But it also is, tells you the limit of number of how many shares that can be acquired. So what classes of shares are available and how many of each of those shares. And the third thing it tells you is what rights each of those shares have. You may have common shares that are voting. You may have common shares that are non-voting. So do I have voting rights or non-voting rights of these shares, right? Are they held as preferred shares and they're preferred over the common? There's different st situations with different shares that will be listed in the Articles of Incorporation. Now, anybody who owns shares in a corporation is called a shareholder. If you own shares in a public company, you're still a shareholder, but they call you a stockholder. Very similar, okay? Same thing. The articles are required to set out the classes of any maximum of shares at the corporation. Oh, we already said that. It's the maximum of shares. Sorry, I jumped ahead, okay? And the classes of shares, as I mentioned, a big part of that is you're going to have a certain amount of voting shares. The class A typically, maybe the class B, C, D, whatever. The first classes are typically going to be your common voting shares. Those are the shares that usually have the most value. And if you're ever going to sell the company because they have voting power, they have the value. Then you're also going to have your non voting shares as well and your non-voting shares don't have as much control but they may be used for dividends because in there it'll say do they have the right to vote and do they have the right to receive dividends and that's up to the director to declare the dividends to the shareholders. Anybody in the same class of shareholdings must receive the same amount of dividends according to their number of shares they own. But if you have a different class of shares than someone else in the company you may receive different amounts of dividends or one may receive dividends and the other one no dividends at all. So it's very important when structuring your corporation that you use different share classes for different types of partners, okay? Now there's also the right in some of those shares to, re re uh, to receive the remaining property at the end if the corporation's wound up. Now a lot of times it's the preferred shareholders that get it because the preferred shareholders are typically people that put money in. So an investor or maybe you put money in yourself and the preferred shares, hey, we're going to pay out these preferred shareholders if something goes sideways or the company closes before we pay out the common ones, okay? So your share capital. So that's why they're called preferred shares because you're going to have preferential treatment if something goes wrong to be paid out the assets or the money from the corporation. Now, those preferred shares can be voting or non-voting. Again, it will say in the articles, it will lay out all these details, okay? Very important too, if there are more than one class of shares, each of the three rights to be assigned, which is the right to vote, the right to dividends, and the right to property if something happens. Okay, those are the three rights. Now, but one class, let's say, does not have all three. It's going to go to the one that has the highest availability. So if there is, for example, voting common and voting preferred, usually the voting common is going to take over unless the shareholder agreement says something specific. And same thing with the dividends, right? Or the payout, especially the right to the remaining property. The preferred shares are going to have a preferred status over the common. So some shares will have preferred status over others in certain situations. And it's also important, and I know we're talking about it here, but you need a shareholder's agreement if you have partners because that will lay out any further details other than those three rights of the shares. Now, if directors wish to change the classes of shares described in the articles or any of the rights attached to a class of shares, an amendment to the articles of the corporation will be required and a special resolution of the shareholders is required as well. Because remember, the shareholders voted in the director. The director is now going to make changes, but if those changes affect the shareholder, the shareholder will have to make sure that he agrees to it in a special uh, minutes that's signed or special resolution. And in certain circumstances involving changes to classes of shares and rights, the shareholder of each class or group may be entitled to vote separately. So if it's going to change a class A and there's five class A, they might need to vote on that change to say, yeah, we agree with that change or not. Three to two, okay, we're going forward with the change. Right? So depending if they all agree or not, and they're all willing to sign the resolution, if not, it might be taken to a vote. And again, the articles of incorporation are where you're going to find the details of the shares and what's available, maybe not what's issued, of course, but what is available, how many can be authorized, what classes, what rights, and so forth. Okay? So that's very important. But also inside the minute book, you have other resolutions that might change things, and you can amend the articles of incorporation, but you cannot backdate the articles. They must be amended on the day you request the change to the registry.
If you've got any questions on classes of shares and share structures, we'd love to go in more in depth. This is a very simplistic and summary video, but thanks for being a part of our business tips and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.